morning affirmations to open and activate your third eye your powerful tool to open cleanse and attune your third eye for an intuitively led day tell the truth when you think about somebody who says they're spiritual do you have them sounding like this yeah they have yeah. to but you they gotta, gotta talk. yeah no offense but it sounds like some commie gobbledygook Welcome back to Black and Blurred. Thank you for clicking on this YouTube video. Hi. That's Dan. That's me. I'm Brandon. Guys, welcome back. If you do us a favor, enter, get engaged with this video for us because YouTube doesn't really like us that much and we're trying to make a presence here on YouTube. So could you engage with this video, like, subscribe, comment? I don't know how the YouTubers are saying it, what the chronology is of the commands, requests, but do all of those things for us. If you don't like the video, at least click like and then tell us how much you hated the video comment, in the comment section. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the comment section, do that. Or if you really hate the video, double click the dislike button. We'd really appreciate that. All right, let's jump into it. So in my very rare <clears throat> but sporadic gander on Facebook, I was actually on Facebook Messenger. That's the only kind of Facebook relationship I have. And uh I was chatting with somebody, and when you back out from a chat, it takes you to Facebook. Sneaky, 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 sir. <laughs> what movie? Mr. Deeds. Jeez, I'm crawl. How'd you get down here so fast? Sneaky, sneaky, sir. All right, well done. So when you back out, um, <laughs> it takes you to Facebook. And the first thing I saw was a very familiar phrase, but it was a question. It was a question by a friend of mine. And she asked the question, when people are saying they're spiritual, what do they mean? It is some reference. The context is somebody who would call themselves spiritual and not religious. Hmm. Now, I think it's a very well-known phrase because when I went looking for clips to kind of like fluff this episode with, maybe because of the search algorithm or whatever, but a lot of the clips were debunking the phrase and its nonsensical nature. So maybe that's just because it was my YouTube and they're like, oh, theology, apologetics, philosophy, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then the occasional backyard fight, car <laughs> racing, gun video, somewhere it found, uh, <laughs> somewhere it disagrees that uh, being spiritual and not religious is a sensible proposition. But I couldn't really find anything. However, even though there are a lot of different YouTube channels that have talked about this phrase ad nauseum there's there's a plethora of information you can get on how to think well about this i before looking at the comment section wanted to do a video on this i, I as soon as i saw the question i just reached out to the original post my friend and i said hey you cool with us doing a video on this and just looking at the comment section on the video and say yeah now, now you've already seen the post because same friend we have the same mm -hmm. Well, I went to high school with him. Um, so I haven't seen it. So I want us to look through these comments and let's see where people's thoughts are regarding this phrase. So now the first, the, the, the first, or I guess the most popular comment um, was this, for this, this long paragraph here. So let's read that and let's see what Devin Franklin has to say regarding what does it mean to be spiritual? It means that I recognize a power greater than myself and that of all religions, the force that moves through all living things, regardless of a belief system, through the tool that can only be described as love, where religion ends with its many rules and lines, spirituality is the continuation vein that is the foundation for all connections to God. When you research all religious teachings and outline the timeline of their use, interesting phrase there is a start point for each however looking deeper at texts the common threads are a higher power a sense of faith and love that governs all beings very interesting yeah. religion is just the method in which certain groups choose to praise once you strip the rules that are imposed by man not even by god throughout history religion has served to divide an imposed hierarchy Spirituality will allow you to find connections beyond a belief system. 
It will have you at church in a field of sunflowers, learning just as much about the power of God and the universe that has been lent to us. Thank you for the question. Now, what we're doing in this video, Darren, is we are responding to ideas, not mm -hmm. people. I don't know Devin Franklin. So I'm, I'm sure she's a wonderful. Uh, that's Might a, be De Devon. Yeah. Devon, okay, Devon Franklin. Maybe, maybe, maybe he's a wonderful dude. I think oh, it's a woman. Know. Is it a woman? Okay, I'm sorry. So. I can't see the picture. We don't know. We're not saying it's a picture of a woman that looks like a man or a man. That looks, we can't see the picture. However, we just don't know who this person is. So when I do this. No offense, but it sounds like some commie gobbledygook. I'm talking about the idea. <laughs> That's all. Mm. I'm talking about the statement. Um. Did you read that paragraph in the lady's voice from the beginning, from the beginning of the episode? I read it like uh, Damon Wayans. How? In a living color. Oh, nah, 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 nah. Yeah. There's some words in there that just don't belong next to each other. First of all, we must internalize the flatulation of the matter by transmitting the effervescence of the Indonesian proximity in order to further segregate the crux of my binary infection. No, I think that, but, but I think it's more flowery than barbershop. That's too flowery for, for the Damon Wayans. For the one, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish, knickknack, paddywhack. That's way that's way too flowery. I was reading it in the British accent. Oh. But um let, let let's start there real quick. We're not gonna really pick on Devon or Devin. Devon. But I think was, boys. what are we dealing with here? What are your thoughts? Um who's your friend and went to high school basketball player? She grew up Lama. in the league. Brittany. Huh? Brittany. Brittany mm -hmm. We we did a uh an episode with her a while back and she just gave her experience through church and had the Lord not kept her eyes on him. Mm. This is what it can turn into. It sounds like someone who grew up in a church with legalism where human beings abused positions in the church. Um, and so now people are saying, I don't need church. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I don't even need to read scripture anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I can kind of create the best version of God in my own heart and worship that thing. And guess what? I can't even tell you what or who it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of one person. You know who I'm thinking about? Am I allowed to say his name? Yeah, oh, hell, he, he's fine with it. Oh, yeah, Morgan. So I am one of God's details within his objective point of view. So within this detail of me, I have I have all of the objectivity that I am supposed to have because I am of the objective, but I am a subject of the objective. So what I'm trying to say. Yeah, man, my boy Morgan, I love him to death. He and I battled for five years around statements like this one or whatever was just said in this post let me bring it back up um it's it's saying so much without having said anything because at the end of the day th these are fundamental things these are foundational things that we ought to care about we ought to care about truth from a philosophical standpoint what is truth i know we're in the postmodern age where there is no such thing as truth but logic can tell us that that statement is nonsensical because in order for that to be quote unquote true it uh disproves the very proposition that there is no such thing as truth right like you're making a statement in a in a presupposing that it's true in order to disprove truth. So it's illogical. And God has given us this thing called logic to serve as like a black light to check the sheets of our thinking and say, hey, you got some fallacies yeah. <laughs> all over the place. You've got some fallacies all over the place. 
and, and it, go ahead. Yeah. No, at its root, it seems just like a conflict between man and God. Yeah. It's like a you know, I've made a decision about who God is based on what I've seen men do. Um, that's that's very good. Yeah. I, I I I was there. I was there. I think that you can go to church now. I would say there are two primary uh, flaws in your thinking when you do that. The second flaw, I'm going from least important to important. The the second flaw would be that you have um, like what you what exactly what you just said. Mostly in a Christian context, you have made a conclusion on Jesus based on what people have done. Either what you've seen people do or what people have done to you, you've therefore made a conclusion on Jesus. The primary flaw is that you um, have placed your hope ultimately in man and not in God. So therefore, man's actions, when they disappoint you, completely tear down your entire worldview, which ought not be the case, but it's a sinful world and we get it and it happens. <clears throat> but I think that there's a lot of nitpicky, what people will call nitpicky thinking that needs to be done around this statement or around these, this thought that I, I, you know, I get the sense, I don't know this person I'm talking about in general. I think typically the way you, you should nitpick at this phrase or this thought People's response is typically going to be, you're doing too much. Mm -hmm. But that's what it takes to think well. <laughs> we, we ought to think well, right? So uh, it means, this is, this is the opening statement. It means that I recognize a power greater than myself and that of all religions. Now, um, when you think about religions, I'm not going to get into the semantics because I think at, even at the core of this phrase, I'm spiritual, not religious. We're talking about semantics, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think it, it, they, they even addressed it a little bit in here. I would agree. Religion is the method in which certain groups choose to praise. Um, or I would say they, they choose to practically observe mm -hmm. what they believe to be true. The means in which they choose to observe what they believe to be true so it's still rooted in truth however um <clears throat> what was i about to say it means that i recognize a power greater than myself and that of all religions oh <clears throat> these religions at the core aren't just these ex hollow shells that exist and then some deity they're truth claims mm -hmm. at the end of the day their truth claims. So if you're Muslim, your implicit truth claim is that Allah is God as described by Muhammad in the Quran and in the Hadith. If you are Mormon, then your truth claim is that there is a God and that God has daddy and a grand God daddy and a great grand God daddy. And then we're all going to grow up and become daddy gods and become a great grand, you know, and have your own plan. Whatever Mormon proposition is, that's the truth claim. And Christianity is also a truth claim in every religion that anybody could come up with, whether ancient or some hippie in L.A. with flowers tied to their headband. It's a truth claim. And the fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, you have to be able to answer the question, is it true? Mm -hmm. I, I, I would say that whenever I talk to somebody <clears throat> who has high vibrations, I think that's the language people use, higher vibrations, they're always self-proclaimed. They, they, they proclaim themselves to be very well-read and having mm -hmm. done great research. Have you found this? Yeah. 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 They pride themselves on having studied everything. Yeah. Um, and you haven't. Not, it's not just I've studied and so have you. It's I've studied and you need to do your research. You need to do your research. I'm not claiming that Devin. No, no, no. However, the reason I point that out is because what I have found in all of those conversations that I've had with people is they haven't even done the most elementary study of scripture. Mm -hmm. Most of their understanding of scripture is second, third, and fourth hand. 
or 100th hand, which comes in the form of a meme. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's not even the most elementary. Um, let, let, we're going to come back to this one, but let's just see some others. I don't want to uh, pick on Devin. Oh, I clicked on the wrong thing. Here, let's stop screen sharing. This one says, Larry Hawkins, I believe in a higher being, but I don't believe I need to align with one spe specific religion to know or believe in God. Church can never make a true believer of God feel like they don't have a relationship with God just because they don't attend church. Hold on, let me read that again. Church can never make a true believer of God feel like they don't have a relationship with God just because they don't attend church. All right. So he's saying that if you're a true believer of God, no matter what church folks say, you'll always have a relationship with God and they can never make you feel otherwise. Um, what are your thoughts? Um, it just echoes the same thing. Anytime somebody's saying church, you know, I'm a spiritual because church, right? Um, right. There's some pain, yeah. Or just if, if even if there isn't pain, maybe just a lack of answers, mm -hmm. uh, or just bad theology, or just you know, they grew up in um, bibliocentric ethnic theism. Yes, sir. <laughs> and so, they for don't context, know. people. What if you guys haven't followed our channel? If you haven't watched our videos, we highlight the lacking, the disciple, the, the lacking in discipleship when it comes down to quote unquote black culture and Christianity. Christianity is a truth claim and it transcends our skin pigmentation and the cultures that proceed from that skin pigmentation. But when it comes down to American church culture and more specifically black church culture, we don't lift our eyes above our culture mm -hmm. and we're not we are not discipled in scripture and in uh what it means to be a disciple and an ambassador of christ and to grow in the knowledge of the scriptures we, we are not discipled in that we're discipled in the culture with god language and that quote-unquote religion is what darren called it bibliocentric where the bible is center but it's not authoritative it's relevant as far as we say it's relevant. Ethnic, because ethnicity is central and it's the most important thing. Theism, where God is a personal God and he's here to do my bidding, do all the things that I need him to do so I can get the things I want out of this life. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd like to look at it from another angle, a more, I guess, um, optimistic angle. Is that these some of these are people who haven't yet heard the gospel? Yes, and their minds aren't closed, um, and their hearts aren't closed on anything, mm -hmm. um, which can be dangerous. I mean, they could be open to anything, mm -hmm. but um, maybe hearing the gospel would close their minds on that truth, um, because you know maybe they went to a church that just didn't talk about the gospel. That's right, and it was um, fair sick. Yeah, yeah. They experienced legalism and religion mm -hmm. um, and never heard the gospel. And so potentially they could hear the gospel for the first time and go, oh, <laughs> that's what Christianity is. Yeah. Um, Which even in these people, like I'm looking at, I don't want to pick on the ones who are talking more new agey stuff. Let's look at some of the Christians. Or I'm assuming, I'm assuming yeah. Christian. I just saw Quincy Howard. It means they don't want to submit to the true God in his word. Now, I don't know who Quincy is saying is the true God in his word. We know mm -hmm. that God to be Jesus Christ. Um, so I, I don't know what that means. Um, Trey Welcher or Welker says in real life, it means 2 Timothy 3. Huh. Well, um, specifically verse 5. So it talks about the end times. Paul writes a letter to Timothy and it talks about what people will want to hear and what mm -hmm. they won't want to hear. Um, uh, in these latter days and things like that. Um, yeah. The reason I wanted to do a video is specifically because what you just said there, that 
there are people who consider themselves spiritual because they can't bring themselves to say there is no God. Yeah. The Bible says that a fool says in his heart, there is no God. Now, here's the catch 22 with that. I think I used that right. I've never really used catch 22 before. But here's the catch 22 with that. <clears throat> Not only is it a fool that claims there is no God, the fool that claims there is no God is claiming there is no God because they themselves feel they're God. So if you are somebody who says you're spiritual and the God you believe in is one you've made up, then you, in essence, are God. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of things, there are a lot of people who teach that, either subversively or explicitly. Um, and we even see that in Christian kind of Christianese creeping in the church, this me-centered, Luciferian mindset. Um, that's kind of do what thou wilt, do whatever you want. And then God yeah, Crystal says that she said, I stopped saying that and say that I'm awakening, I'm that I'm awakening up to know the real God is me and my DNA from the past and future, including mother sun, mother moon, and mother earth, that we are all one with e with each other. No offense, but it sounds like some commie gobbledygook. Uh, it, look, here's the thing. Is it? Let me tell this story. I, I'm glad that I thought to bring him up. I love him dearly, Morgan. He and I would battle on these things all the time. And this is the truth. And he'll t he would say this. There was never a point where in the wee hours of the morning when he and I would have these debates that he would leave my apartment with me thinking, huh, that's a good point. It's not because I'm smarter than him. It's because of what we were arguing. I was arguing the truth of scripture versus what he was arguing in um, just new age ideology, vibrations, and astrology and numerology and being on higher planes of existence and things like that. And being God, he would say, he, he would, I don't know if he's changed that, but he, would, he said that many times that he is God while also being the more open-minded one because he recognizes that there is truth in the Bible. There is truth in the Quran, all these different ways, which is perennialism. There are so many different ways to get to God. But he would always be the one who would leave the apartment thinking, all right, let me get back to you. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Morgan. Uh, wow. Uh, wow. Wow. But, um, he would always leave and say, all right, let me get back to you on that, just to try to find a rebuttal. Mm -hmm not really considering that he never has answers. But I think this was the most impactful time for me. And I wonder how he still feels about this time, if he remembers it. He had fallen on hard times, just in general, with life and financially. And he and I, he called me, and I told him I was going to come meet him. And we were going to chat. And we sat in my car, and he was sitting on the other side in the passenger seat, dejected. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I think he'd be okay with me sharing this, but he's broken at this point. He's broken. And my only question for him in that moment was, I said, Morgan, I have a serious question for you. Is there anything the stars or the numbers can do for you right now? One thing. Let's do it. What's the thing? What's the thing? What did she say? Mother sun and mother moon, mother earth. In that moment, what can they do for you right now? Because what I know to do is I can talk to my father for you. I can talk to my father for you. Now, he doesn't recognize the grace in his life. Now that he has a beautiful wife, beautiful child, and those hard times passed by him. And he's been protected. I pray that he recognizes that. But at the end of the day, that patience that the Lord has with people, where his grace falls on them, um, it's not going to be forever. It's not going to be forever. Now, I know that that ruffles some feathers. But now we have to get to the truth. You got to ask, well, why? What do you mean? God's not wrathful. What is that? Well, 
well, now we can start asking some questions. What does it mean to be spiritual? All right, well, in your spirituality, and this is what we would always get Morgan on, do you believe in evil? What is evil? If you believe in evil, then what is good? How do you know the two from one another? You have to answer these questions. And not only do you have to answer them, you don't get to answer them however you want. They have to be consistent and coherent Mm -hmm. because that's how you know it's true. You don't get to just say, well, when the vibration reaches a level threat, threat 3.2 to 2 pop pop, people are going to be like, what are you talking about? (laughs) You don't get to just say whatever you want. That's not how the truth works. We know this not because we are owners of the truth. It's because the truth is a person and we know him personally. So I think people need to really recognize that. Um, this is the only other one, right? We read both. This is yeah. all, all of them. Um, yeah, I think that when people have this conversation about being spiritual versus religious, there's just a lot of elementary aspects of thinking that they've that they've bypassed. And, and I, I think I, even I mean even even before you get to the thinking part. Um, I think that they just may not even understand uh, some definitions of words. I mean, that's exactly they, what I was they haven't even been presented what with what true Christianity is mm. to then say I'm not that. Yeah, they already have a a, a false view of what Christianity is. Yeah, and uh, because of whatever it could be experiences, it could just be because of a hardened heart in general because we're just sinful. Um, but in a lot of cases, it's it's bad experiences in church. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it you know for those reasons, they've already turned away from Christianity and said, "Look, I don't want to conform. I want to wear pants. I want to go to the movie house, right? <laughs> Shout out the llama. <laughs> yeah, I want to go to the movie house. I want to wear pants. I want to wear earrings. Um, you know." It, it, uh, you know, all those all those kind of legalistic things can make people go, oh, right. this is Christianity. I don't want any part of that. Let me go search for something else. But um, what happens makes, is, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I said that may not be a conscious decision, but that's what happens. That's yeah. what happens when we stray away from what's true. Um, we just get lost. <laughs> and that's literally <laughs> what they sound like. And when you see it through that paradigm, then you also throw all of the other harmful things into that bag that yeah. says, well, I do want to have sex, even though I'm not married. I do, right. um, you know, want to smoke this or take this. I, I do want to find true joy in the world. And they see biblical prohibitions as rules. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, this is the way you ought to see it. In the same way that I tell my sons, not to play on the steps. It's not because I'm an arbitrary father who created an arbitrary rule. It's because I love them. And guess what, Darren? They're too stupid to not play on the steps. (laughs) Right. They're too stupid. If they get the chance, they're going to want to play on our hardwood steps and they're going to fall down and hurt themselves. Then I'm telling them what's necessary in order to thrive in life. Right. That's how you see it. When you come through these prohibitions, there are prohibitions that exist in our marriages. But did you or did I go to our wives and say, all right, now these are the rules? No. Right. But there is a rule. No, I'm not going to be staying up all night talking on the phone to other women. No, I'm not going to be going out to dinner with women. She's not going to go out to dinner with men. I'm not going to have individual friends that she doesn't know about. They're going to be our friends. She's Mm -hmm. not going to have, we didn't make these rules up. Now I'm not speaking for every couple. Some couples probably have control issues and need to work that stuff out, but we did not come up with those rules. It is my love for her. And it is her love for me that naturally created those prohibitions because I have a woman I will live and die for now. And she will prioritize or my attention will be prioritized toward her, mm-hmm. not to anyone else. Women are not. You need to understand that. And that's not some arbitrary prohibition I'm living by where I feel shackled up like, oh, man, I really want to go to this strip club. 
I don't. <laughs> right. I don't. So if people have those desires, then it's because they lack love for God, even though they're using the word love. So you got to ask that question. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but you, you, I think at the very beginning, you already said what the, I think what the highlight of the, to be drawn out of this, there's pain. Mm-hmm. And if after pain, if not in addition to pain, there's ignorance. And I'm yeah. not saying that in the standardist sense. I'm saying it in the classical sense. People don't know. They haven't been discipled in the scriptures and they have gone to churches where they are presented a bunch of arbitrary rules without knowing what it is. Mm-hmm. So what people need to know is that when it comes down to love, the only reason we even know the word love is because God is love. Now, the only reason we can even love is because God loved us. This is in first John for people who need to read it. First John four. And this is what I want to read to, for us to close. I want to read Romans. Romans 1. I'm going to start with verse 16. And this is important because people need to know what Christianity is. And in addition to being a truth claim like every other religion, Christianity sets itself apart because there is no religion that you can find in this world from the most ancient to the hippie with the flowers tied in the headband that doesn't have a, a list of instructions on how to get to God. Mm-hmm. That's what that is. Even the lady who was speaking so ever so gently to us in the beginning was going through her breathing and meditations for us to open up our third eye because there's a list of instructions on how to get to God, even if you believe you are that God. You have to activate it, right? Like that going, what's his name? Iron Fist. <laughs> oh no, summoning it his is yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't stand up. Instructions. But Christianity sets itself apart because Christianity is news. It's news that God took the step to get to us. That's the difference. And you don't find any other religion or belief system or truth claim. And the beauty about Christianity and the Bible is that it's falsifiable. It gives you truth claims that you can prove are wrong. So I, I encourage people to do that, set out on that. This is Paul writing to a church in Rome, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Whoops. Shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made. I'm going to stop there. Um, and just give brief explanation of that and say the things about God that we need to know are clearly perceived. What are some of those things? Evil exists. Mm -hmm. By evil things that God hates, sin, it exists. How do you know that? Because there are things that exist that you hate. And you're clearly not God. But evil, just like darkness, is not an actual thing. It's not a measurable thing. It's a privation. Like rust is not a thing. Metal is a thing. Rust is a destruction. It's a privation in metal. So good is the thing. And so the question is, if there is no such thing as a standard of good, then how would you ever know what evil was to begin with? Mm -hmm. And you know evil exists. You know the world's not perfect. God's divine attributes are clearly perceived. This is the problem we have with that. If evil exists, that means good exists. And if good exists as the standard, then that means God 
is that good standard. If God is that good standard and none of us are perfect, then that means that we, therefore, are evil. If we are evil and God is good, then we deserve to be punished because any good judge would punish evil. Isn't that why riots exist there? Mm -hmm. People don't no like justice, justice, no peace. Punish. Any perfect judge would punish evil. But if God is the perfection of good, he is good in every single way, and he's also perfectly loving. So how does a loving, perfectly just God stay perfectly loving and perfectly just? Well, he punishes humanity by punishing a substitute for humanity and also punishing all of those who do not want to receive the sacrifice of that substitute. Jesus Christ is that substitute. That's what his coming was for. God came as human being so that humans could die at the hands of God's wrath and that evil be punished and justice be served. But he also came so that evil people like me and Darren can receive that sacrifice and be pardoned. And not only just pardoned, but now we're made perfect, where God calls us his sons. We're not just these two little poor evil kids that he gave handouts to. We've been given a perfect, clean slate of righteous son where we inherit his kingdom in death. And we don't boast about it because we didn't earn it. But people need to know that that's who God is. That's what true spirituality is. And our religion is our lives as living sacrifices dedicated to that belief. And guess what? If it never is true, if Jesus didn't come, you can prove that. You can prove that. But our calendar isn't split into BC and AD for no reason. But you can prove it. So my advice for those who are skeptical, prove it false. And be willing to go where the truth leads. Prove it false. Well, guys, we appreciate it. Hope you guys take that to heart. Once again, do us a favor. Like, subscribe, comment on this. If you hated this video, please like the video first and then tell us how much you hated it in the comment section. If you really hated it, double click that dislike button. See y'all.